Welcome back, everybody. Um, in today's class, I will be doing a walkthrough, all right, on how we can actually create an IAM user. Uh, you know, before now, okay, all up to this point, we've been using the root account um, to do everything that we've been doing, okay? So if you've been following the lectures, you would realize that we've been using our root accounts to do, you know, virtually everything up until this point. But today I want to show you how to set up an IAM user that you can use to, you know, do whatever it is you want to do going forward. Because best practice is that you don't use your root account for any day-to-day -day operations. All right, your root account is just basically to set up your account and then you keep the details of that account somewhere. And then you can use your IAM account, all right, to do whatever it is you want to do within um, your environment. Okay. So today I'll be doing a walkthrough uh, to guide us on how we can actually achieve that. Okay. Now the first thing we want to do is basically to you know set up a budget. All right. Let's do that. That's the first thing I want us to do. So we're going to come here and then we're going to click on billing and cost management. So click on that, and that will take us to the billing section. So where we can set up. All right, our budget basically, you know, just to monitor our usage so that we don't go over uh, the free tier and you know all of that. So here you can see that I don't have it set up already, so I'm going to click here. So set up required. So click on that. All right. So when you click on that, it's going to take you here to these uh, you know templates that you can actually use. So here you have different options. So here there's a use template simplified, which is use the recommended configurations. You can decide some configurations later and all of that. Then there's zero spend budget. So create a budget that notifies you once your spending exceeds, you know, 0 0.01. So basically, as you just want to be within the free tier, right? You don't want to spend anything. But we're going to be setting a monthly budget because as we go on in the course of this class, there are resources and services that we're going to be using that of course will be, you know, will take us outside of the free tier. So we can't really set up a zero spend budget because I mean, there are things that we're going to be doing. Okay. For example, when you get to Jenkins, when you want to set up your Sonar Cube server, all right, for your code scanning analysis and all of that, I mean, you would have to go outside of the free tier because those are applications that would not run effectively on your t2 micro or right, instance right it will require more maybe like t3 medium t3 small instances right to run so ultimately you're going to have to step outside of the free tier so what we're going to be doing is basically we're going to create a monthly cost budget a monthly cost budget all right and we're just going to put something there so basically we just want to put this to like let's say maybe ten dollars all right every month okay so that is our estimated monthly budget so if we if we go over that then we'll get notified all right so we're going to get notified so here you can put an email address here as well all right of you know the people or the person that will receive that a lot all right so you can put an email address here okay and you can also play around with you know all these other options as well but i think this is okay, but of course you can also click on customized to basically customize it, um, you know, a little further. Okay, so here if I click on customized, I can come here and say I want a cost budget. All right, I want a usage budget and all of that. So let's stick with the cost budget. And so here I can give my budget a name. Okay, so we can say uh, learning. All right, so let's just say learning cloud and devops okay so it's going to be monthly and we're going to be starting all right so you can say starting this month so budget method is fixed all right so we're going to be fixing a particular amount so what's the amount we're looking at so let's say fen okay so budget scope of course all aws services should be captured and here we don't have any other thing so we go next all right so here you can add an alert threshold, right? So if you click on add an alert threshold, you can actually come here to say the threshold is 75% of the budgeted amount, all right? So which means if you um, have spent up to 75% of the $10, which is $7.5, all right, then you will be notified, okay? So 75% of the actual budgeted amount, okay? So that's the threshold. And if you want to take that further, you can say 85%. 
right so that would mean that you know once you cross that then you will be all right notified so here you can put the email address of the recipient all right so you can put the email address here and here you have some optional sns settings which i don't think is necessary okay so click on next all right so as soon as you're done just say next and here all right you can create your budget so now we have our budget created so learning and devops so and for now the treasure is fine all right the budget is ten dollars and so the current versus budgeted so we've not you know of course there's no data just yet all right so after by the time we start using and start you know creating resources and all of that of course you would see the current versus budgeted you know the bar will start moving and all of that but now we've set up all right our budget so anytime we want to anytime we've got into that you know 85 percent threshold then we'll get a notification all right so that we can quickly check our environment and terminate you know all the instances or whatever it is that we've forgotten to terminate we can actually terminate all of that okay now another thing that i would like to show us also is that you know for now it is only the root account all right that can actually access you know the costs okay it's only the root account that can access the cost what you're spending okay now the card that you registered with of course is associated with your root account right and it is only the root account that can access the cost just you know for now but if you're creating an im user which will be an administrator that will be managing you know all your resources and services going forward then you should also allow your im user uh, to be able to see you know the costs all right the bills so that i mean if you're going over your budget and all of that you can actually quickly see it okay before things go out of hand all right because if you don't enable your im user to view or write a cost then it means that it is only the root account that will be able to see that now the implication of that is if you're not logging in you know regularly with your root with your root user you won't be able to keep track of what you've spent and all that. You're just going to rely on the alert, okay? But if you're logging in with your IM user regularly, of course, as you're logging in, you're seeing the cost, you're seeing what you're spending, you know, it's getting updated, all right, every time. So let's see how we can enable that. So I'm going to come here to training. So let's click on accounts, all right? So let's scroll down. So here we're going to see IM user and role access to billing information, all right? So we're going to say edit. And we're going to activate IM access. That's just the only thing that we need to do. So now every of our IM user will be able to see, all right, what we're spending, all right, the bill. But now one thing about it is that, of course, in a normal work environment, you won't, your IM user will not have access to the billing information. It is only maybe designated accounts, all right, I can see that. But we're just doing this for training purposes so that as you're logging in with your IM user, you can also keep track, all right, of your usage okay of your bills you know as you go on in the course of the class okay so click on update to update that and you're done all right now let's go to the im section all right and just do a few things uh all right so let's go there it's going to be a very short um, class anyway so let's go to the im session now here we can see that we have some security recommendations right so there's one security recommendation and that is we should add MFA for the root user. Now, the MFA is a multi-factor authentication, the same thing as your two-factor authentication. I'm sure some of us have heard about 2FA, right? So you've heard about 2FA, which is two-factor. So MFA and 2FA are basically the same thing. So multi-factor means that means more than one thing. So basically, the idea is that, you know, there should be more than one way for which, you know, a user should be able to authenticate. All right. So apart from the password that they know, all right, there should be something else that they can also use to authenticate. All right, that we can actually use to confirm that it is truly this user that is trying to log in. All right. So in environment like this, we're not just going to be depending on passwords because I mean, password can be compromised. But if you have an MFA, your MFA may not be easily compromised. All right. So that is why we need to add an MFA. So here, I'm going to click on add MFA, all right, to my root account. So I'm going to give my MFA here a name. So we're going to call these, all right, uh, let me just say training, all right, root, all right, root MFA. Okay. 
So here there are different options. So we're going to be going with the Authenticator app option because I mean we don't have a token, we don't have any of those things, but we have an Authenticator app that we can actually use. So here I'm going to open up an app here. Uh, I'm trying to log in. Okay. So I'm going to log in on my phone right now. All right. I am on my phone right here. Right. And I'm going to click next. Now, once I click next, it's going to bring me to this page where I will, I can show a QR code or I can show the secret. All right. But I'm going to be using the QR code. So on my mobile, the idea basically is that when you open your app, all right, you can actually take your mobile phone like this and use it to scan or write the QR code here. Okay, so the QR code that you see on the screen, you can take your mobile phone and use it to scan, all right, and then you can go ahead and configure your system. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing, all right, right now. So here, you need to do on this uh, app is basically to click on the plus sign here. So you click on the plus sign and it will tell you, ask you three things. So scan QR code, scan image or enter manually. So what we're going to choose is to scan QR code. So I'm going to click on scan QR code here. All right. And then it's going to bring me here. And then I will have to put my phone like this. All right. Now, the moment I put my phone and it scans the QR code, you can see that here it has brought the name. All right. That I put here. So basically the name that I added, you know, that the, at the very beginning, training route and then he added some you know some code to that and then here i'm going to click on save and then now you can see that it's generating all right some code so here on my screen i'm going to be entering two different mfa codes so the first one i can see on my phone screen now is 439 all right and then 755 so i'm going to wait for this code to expire it actually takes 30 seconds so the code will change every 30 seconds all right so let's wait for that. Okay, so I have a new one. So that'll be 027007, right? So once I am done with that, I'm just gonna click on add, all right, MFA section now. And I refresh this page, you can see that the security recommendation has actually gone, right? So here I'm, I'm gonna log out, all right? So let's test our MFA. Okay, so if you look at my phone screen, the code is still, is gonna be 30, 30 seconds. So I'm gonna come back here to all right, try to log in again, but of course, we're still logging in as the root. So I'm going to put in my email here. All right, so I'm going to put in that and then I'm going to put my password. Okay, now you can see that it's asking me for the MFA code, right? So here I'm going to put in the MFA code. So that'll be 495, all right, 415, and then I press enter. Okay, and now I'm able to, all right, I'm able to log in. So that is basically, all right, how the old MFA thing works. Okay, so that is how to have the MFA, all right, on your mobile, uh, you know, using your mobile phone, using the uh, Authenticator app on your phone. So you can use OT, you can use, you know, different apps, right, as far as you can, you know, download on your mobile phone, that'll be fine. So that is for the root account. So now let's go back to the IAM. So you can search here for IAM. All right, so let's go back there. Okay, and let's create uh, a user that we're gonna be using to, you know, basically just log in every now and then. Now we're still gonna be delving into the IAM section. Okay, later on where we talk about users, groups, policies, all those things. But for now, just so that, you know, we can log in uh, with a normal user, right? Without using a root account every time, that's exactly what we want to do. So here I'm going to click on users. All right, create a user. So I'm going to call this, um, you know, uh, let me just put my name here. Okay, so I'm just putting something funny. Okay. Now here, I'm going to have to check in provide console access because I mean, I want to access my account using console uh, for now. Okay. So I'm going to put that. So I'm going to say provide console access. Well, I can auto generate password. I'm going to use a custom password. All right. So I'm going to use a custom password. So I don't want to generate, you know, any password. Okay. So now here it says user must change password at next sign in. It's actually recommended if you are in a work environment, right? You want your users to be able to manage their own passwords. You are not going to be managing their password for them. They will be managing their own password. So in that instance, you will check this. 
all right so that by the time you give them their credentials but it and then they want to log in the next time the system will prompt them towards to change their password okay so that way they can manage their own passwords so that if anything happens with their accounts they won't say is the admin that gave us the details so maybe the admin also has access to our account right so they will take responsibility whatever happens with all right their account okay so here i didn't spell this correctly all right so training okay so here user must change password i'm going to check that i don't need to change my password so i'm going to say next here i don't need to add my user to a group so i'm just going to attach a policy directly Okay, just click on attach policy directly we're going to talk more about all these things and then i'm going to attach these administrator access policies check that next all right and then create user all right so my user has been created so i'm going to return to my user all right so this is my user right here now if you go back to the im dashboard here all right there's this portion that says account alias all right now, account alias is important because it makes things easy for you when you want to sign in, right? Now, this is your sign-in URL. This one right here is your sign-in URL. But sometimes you may not be able to, um, you know, memorize this, okay? So what you want to do is that you want to create an alias that will make it easy for you to, you know, sign in very quickly without even knowing, all right, the URL. So here I'm going to click on Create. And here, I'm going to create an alias. Now, your alias must be unique, I think, across AWS, all right? So, you can just use any alias, all right? So, here, I'm going to call this, you know, training. Um, so, let's just call this shown training, okay? All right, shown dash training, okay? So, I'm going to create that. All right, so hopefully, nobody has used that, okay? So now, how do I use this alias? So I can come here, sign out, all right, and I can click on sign in again. And then let's see. So here, it's going to, it's asking me for my account ID or my alias. So now that we have an alias, I'm going to say show iPhone training, all right? So the whole thing works more like your, um, you know, your DNS, basically, right? So it's going to resolve that name back to the actual account ID, okay? But the alias is just something to give us more like, you know, more like a C name in DNS, okay? We've talked about DNS already, right? So basically, it's easier to remember showing wife in training than to remember the, you know, the account ID, right? So in here, my username is shown at... Um, training and then my password is this and then i press sign in so if everything is okay then i should be able all right to sign in okay so now i have show my training or i add show i think training so you can see that here the account id is this but the im user is this now so we're using the user id you're using the im user now not the um uh, not the the root account so henceforth all right we're going to be using the im user and not the all right and not the root account okay so another thing that you can do all right just to learn on your own is to go to the im section again and here you're going to be seeing a security recommendation which is saying add mfa for yourself so the root account has an mfa already which we did together so here you need to add an mfa for yourself so I'm going to be leaving this part for you, all right, so that you can do this on your own, all right? Add an MFA to your own account yourself and see how you're able to do that. Is that okay? So that is all I wanted to show us in this session, all right? So thank you so much. I'm going to see you, all right, in the next, all right, video. Thank you and bye for now.